Today we're talking about family, amongst other things, but mainly family. And we're trying to define that a little bit or get to the truest sense of the term for us. We've got each other, right? Yeah. We got kids. Yes, absolutely. You had to think about that? <laughs> we got kids, you know. But that isn't the fullest definition of family. We are sort of old school. So family includes relatives and even the ones you don't speak with. Um, the LGBT community around us, those that we've connected with, and those who just have become family by choice. And again, with that in mind, we're going to talk about family. And I think we should start out with the obvious, right? The elephant in the room, family members by blood. And their acceptance or non-acceptance of our marriage. Mm. Hmm. So, I'll, I'll turn to you first, Amber. How do you think your family has reacted to our marriage? I have observed that um, I think at first the idea was definitely jarring, but what I've observed that I think with older, well, all of our parents are getting older, obviously, um, but I think as people get older, they learn um, what's important what and what isn't important. Or to mind their own business? To mind their own, you would hope so, but that's okay. not always the case. But also that they need family more than ever. You know what I mean? And, and the fact that you are, you lead a lifestyle that they haven't chosen or that they don't understand is less important than the fact that they actually need you. You know, they actually need you the older that they get and they realize it. And I think they tend to overlook or come to accept some things more like our marriage. I do think that's the case. Um, yeah, I can see family. that. I can see that with my family. Um, I mean, I think they were, I think they wrapped their head around it by the time we, you know, it was a done deal, but um, but yeah, I think over time they've just gotten that way in general about my lifestyle and my choices. So, hmm. at least my immediate family, I don't speak to all of my extended family about it, so I'm not completely sure. But definitely my immediate family. What do you mean by they need you? Oh, especially parents, I think the older they get and they're ha- and they have health issues and things like that, and I think the fact that they have a child who. Um, is not what they consider, you know, leading, leading a mainstream maybe lifestyle, not the lifestyle that they imagined for mm-hmm. me initially, doesn't matter as much anymore because um, they realize that, you know, love and all that is way more important. The fact that we stick together and the fact that, you know, that I'm still here for them mm-hmm. um, regardless. Nothing about me has really changed. Just, mm-hmm. you know, and if anything, they've gained someone else that they consider loving and respectful and that they can you know appreciate and I, and I think they see that in you so I mm-hmm. see that in my immediate family like and my sisters too okay so I guess I'll turn the question to myself mm-hmm. <clears throat> my family has reacted with silence I think that'd be the easiest way to look at it um I didn't tell my family that I was getting married because I, I, I have a mother who doesn't um, know how to keep uh, anything to herself. Um, she is, uh, what's that thing? A pasta strainer. You pour water <laughs> in, it comes out. So I didn't have to tell them. I knew she would. And I figured that once she told someone, if they wanted to speak to me about it, they would reach out to me. And only one of my uncles has mentioned it to me. And that was in a conversation about other things. Um, but he basically was like, you know, I love you. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And um, you grown, and I'm well grown, by the way. Uh, We're not talking to a 25-year-old woman here. I'm I'm, 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 I'm well grown. So, now, I did recently have a conversation with my mother. um, And two things came out of that conversation. One was that one of my uncles um, felt like he could voice his opinion on my marriage. And um, basically asked her how she could accept it. Um, and her response, and I don't really realize that she thought that it was a bad response. Her response was she'd rather have her kids speaking to her 
than to not. So she's taking the road of, I don't really like it, but I want my daughter in my life. And, you know, and to a certain extent, I get that, but I'm almost like, um, I love you for who you are. Why can't you just love me for who I am without, um, what's the word I'm just looking Just tolerating it? Not tolerating it, but, um, <sighs> what is the word I'm looking for? I'll come back to it later, but, you know, when you quantify it, she's quantifying it, mm-hmm. you know, and I don't understand why you need to add extra layers to something that, to me, should be very simple. Um, so, yeah. And I've talked to, you know, my brothers. They're cool. My brothers don't give a shit, you know, honestly. They're like, what's up, sis, big sis? And we keep it moving because I don't care about their lives like that. I don't judge. I figure you live, let live. And then in the end, it's going to be you when they bury you. Um, and that's it. That's how I feel about everything. My brothers can marry, you know, a squirrel. I wouldn't care. I really, truly wouldn't care. I'd be like, you love the squirrel? Yeah, big sis. Rock on, bro. <laughs> and I, I'd move on with my life. I just don't let things like that affect me. But other people do. And so we I guess we're doing good in that regard. We're not receiving any huge negative flack. Mm-mm. I don't think we were giving balloons. Right. No, but that's true. we're okay. You know. Yeah, and we all we also weren't looking for it either. I mean, right. I think if you you know, I think there's that. I mean, I think our family knows that we're not you know out here looking for their affirmation please please you know accept me and, and accept this and, you know we're not looking for that we're just mm-hmm. trying to live and live well um and if you want to join in you know you're welcome to and if not if not step to the side because we're still moving forward right we are totally moving forward so as i mentioned in the beginning amber has kids we have kids but i didn't give birth to any kids um so as i mentioned i'm well grown and i decided a long time ago that i didn't want kids and i was cool with that and I primarily dated women who didn't have kids. Uh, at least the last two or three women that I've dated seriously didn't have kids. And I was cool with that. I, I, it was fine. It was lovely at times and stuff like that. But so when I met Amber and I realized that she had kids and that we'd be doing this thing that we call love and marriage. Whew. I tell you, them kids eat. But anyway, Amber, question for you. How do you think we're doing as a blended family? Any issues, stories to tell? You want to sing my praises? You know, stuff like that. Yeah, I um, I mean, I think the fact that we don't have any major issues is a success in a lot of ways. That The fact that, you know, we just don't have anything, any major blow-ups, any serious crises says a lot. Um, mm-hmm. Mostly about, you know, our chemistry and our relationship, but definitely you know who you are um yeah i mean the children just don't have an issue um with kind of embracing or accepting you know who you are in their life as a as a guardian and um as another parent so yeah um i guess that's really what that is it does say a lot about about you and um and definitely your ability to kind of be open definitely and mm-hmm. kind of take the roll with the punches we've had a few punches but nothing you know yeah. knocking anybody out <laughs> no, i don't think we have any punches really um a couple of mosquito bites maybe and mm-hmm. things like that um I, what, what role do you see us both playing i mean i feel like when i came in to this i'm more of a disciplinarian and i didn't i don't i didn't foresee myself as that at all i'm being really honest because <laughs> I did. Oh, sorry, that just came out. I did. I did. I did. <laughs> I did. Um, because the women I had dated in the past who had kids, I was really like the class clown with them. I was like their friend. I joked, I laughed because, you know, hey, it wasn't my real responsibility. Right. Um, but now that we live every day, 24 7 with the kids, um, yeah, I feel like I, and I feel like, because I don't believe in corporal punishment, I don't believe in hitting kids. So I feel like you have to calm down a little bit harder because we're not going to hit you so that when I make a punishment it has to stick and it has to hurt does that make sense mm-hmm. but I it, even saying that I think that Amber it they're they're scared of me on the surface but they're petrified of her um, when she does her mom voice or get to walking whew, it's hilarious. And also because <laughs> I am not fundamentally against corporal punishment. <laughs> and they know that also. Right. Right, 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 right. right. 
But we have agreed. We just don't roll like that. Anymore. We have agreed. <laughs> and um, they're quite receptive and happy about that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think at a certain age, anyway, you can't hit nobody no more. But I really just don't believe in hitting kids. I, I was hit as a child. I just think it was, it didn't make me a better person. I don't think. Anyway, so um, primarily we have two kids in the house, two boys. Right. Um, what do you think our responsibility is when it comes to raising two men, two women raising two men? Yeah. Uh, I mean, that means so much. And at different times, you know, it it stands out. Um, like right now, uh, just I've been, you know, with everything going on with women. And I mean, we've, women have always been experiencing, um, you know, a lot and things changing for us in society in general. But as of late, it's really been on my mind. Like, who are we raising what are they going to grow up to be? How are they going to contribute, um, you know, for other women and for themselves and, um, you know, just all of the communities that we find ourselves in. So, um, yeah, I just think that if we don't, if we do nothing else, we have to raise, you know, like thinkers. We really have to raise, uh, we talked about this recently about mm -hmm. being logical and, and actually going through thinking about what you do before you do it mm -hmm. and that's with everything and to me that's so crucial and I've always felt that way uh, I just feel like um, you know boys are taught to be to be strong and to be um, to kind of self-absorbed but not to think about your actions and their consequences mm -hmm. and um, that's true for all of us but definitely I feel like I feel that burden is on us um, you know especially as two women and knowing what we know, I feel like that's we have to pass that on mm -hmm. to them for their own protection and for the protection of others. Yeah, I, I, it's been really interesting for me um, assuming this mantle of responsibility and um, not being overwhelmed with it. Honestly, uh, I used to say in the past when I eat, my family eats, and that that was me. Uh, I've been solo living for so many years. Um, that it was it was it was, a, it was a major mental adjustment for me i may not have shown it on the surface but it was definitely there and and the logic that you speak of i was i was sweeping the kitchen the other day and i told Amber, i said i was thinking i don't think kids are taught to think logically i think they're taught to respond but not <clears throat> given steps as to why they got to that or after they do something question them not in a accusatory manner but a more of a let's go back and revisit why you did what you did so that we can see where your thought process is and then we can also find out if you know you're an asshole or not because you know everybody's not gonna be great mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that except you know oh we're not trying to raise no idiots around here and i think that's really my my role i feel like we i want to produce two men who can step out on their own at 18 or 21 and be productive um, that they don't have to come back home, um, that we don't, they don't call us next to pay a bill every month, that they're not um, producing children that they don't want to care for, um, and that they either, you know, work or, or, or own, which is what I would prefer, uh, which is also why we're moving overseas. We want to show them other uh, versions of living and not just the American way. And there's nothing wrong with the American way, um, but there are definitely other versions out there of, of life and living and freedom. Absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. so. Especially I, for young black, black men. men yeah. yeah, definitely for young black men. I would love for the youngest to be a way big, you know, up until he's 18 to 21, honestly. But we'll see how life happens. I, I would love to get him out of the United States for that reason alone. But, whew, that's deep. Yeah, it is. It really is. But okay. we got this. We got it, mm -hmm. yeah. So, is peppermint a candy or a mint? It's a mint. I came it's in here mint. with a peppermint in my mouth it's and told mint. her I was going to take the candy. Leave me to someplace to put my candy. And she's like, where? What candy? What is it if it's not candy? It's There's mint. no other category. It's a mint. It's a mint. It's not a candy. That's a like mint. saying that a candy it's that a, a, that a Kit Kat's not candy. A Kit Kat is candy. Exactly. Just a like candy a mint bar. is candy. No, a uh, mint is a mint. No, no, it's a mint. No, chime in your opinion. Please. Yes, please. I know I'm right, so you know. Be ready to fight though. Mm -hmm. On IG. Back to the boys though, because <laughs> it's a mint. Um, <laughs> do you think it's harder for them having two moms? 
Or do you think it makes a difference? I mean, probably in the ways that we don't necessarily understand and we may not ever understand. Um, since I, since neither one of us have ever had <laughs> two moms, you right. know. Um, but I will say that um, I also think in some ways it's probably um, not as hard as it has been, obviously, for some families. I mean, I think in this at this time, um, you, you they are in a community or in a situation where people are more accepting and open and you know, whether they are doing it willingly or not, because we talked about, you know, how liberalism is kind of, people are pushed to be very, very politically correct and mm-hmm. things like that. And in some instances, they should be. I think people right. should be respectful, even if they don't feel like it. Um, yeah, so they haven't expressed that. They haven't expressed that, um, you know, that that it's difficult or any kind of frustrations. But I have noticed little things um which make some that make me feel good and some make me wonder okay. like i've noticed them talk about um how maybe somebody at school says something like something in class happens and somebody says something about something that's gay or something mm-hmm. and then in a derogatory way and you know they will say something you know basically to say to balance that out or to support whoever mm-hmm. it is they're talking about or say there's nothing wrong with it you know mm-hmm. they'll actually speak out and say it so that's a good thing that makes me proud um, but then I also wonder if there are instances where they feel like they can't be completely open about their right. life because they think some people may not um, understand. So I can totally see that. Mm-hmm. I can totally see that. Um, but they're, I think they're really accepting, at least on the surface, mm-hmm. um, because they, they, they tell you, your wife's a hit. Right, that's true. <laughs> so that, that's hilarious to me. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I like those conversations. They're giggly. Um, yeah, I think we're we're doing good so far. I mean, it's only been seven months, mm-hmm. but it feels like it's um, been much longer. Mm-hmm. We've we've really got a routine. Mm-hmm. Kids have a routine. They know who to go to for what. I think who's gonna say no? Who's gonna say yes? That's Maybe true. right. Uh, being a I mean Amber. Who oh, has the, the final yes. word? Yes, that part yes. too. Amber is the yes, and I am. Uh, <laughs> but really, funny thing is, they don't. They think I'm always a no. But a lot of things, I just like, yeah, sure, why not? And they're like, oh God, really? So, and I'm always the one that wants to go run out and do stupid stuff. So, we'll see. We'll see. Mm-hmm. So, the last debate before we close out. This episode of Wondering Soup Talks, I guess we can say that. <laughs> Wondering Soup Talks. Fraggle Rock versus the Muppets. We laid in bed at 2 o'clock this morning. Was it midnight? Maybe midnight. Talking about which one was better. There's no contest. And everyone who's listening knows that. So, Because, yes, Fraggle Rock. No. No. I'm glad you agree. <laughs> you slept on it and you agree. I'm proud. I'm proud. The Muppet see, Show see. is a long running, has been a long running series, and it is a favorite of everyone. Check, sipping on Eek's Facebook page, and you will see ha, the that it is Muppet Gang all Fraggle up in the food air. Rock one. <laughs> no, count, no, count it. No, count it. that's not what I count saw. It. You didn't go back. You didn't go check it. Because Fraggle <laughs> Rock has won. Fraggle Rock was ahead of his time. Uh-huh. It was make kids think. It they didn't want to sing along. Muppets was just like uh, I don't know some puppets. I don't know some little special puppets. Mm-hmm. I didn't get the Muppets, so we did it. Jim Henson. That's all I have to say. Yay for him. <laughs> Yay for him. Uh, didn't he do Fraggle Rock though too? Probably. He, he did so many exactly. things. There's no telling. Probably. Right. Right. Probably. Right. So. <laughs> That is Wondering Soup Talks today. I'm Kat. I'm Amber. Follow us on Facebook, IG, and Twitter, Wondering Soup. Join us on our website, www.wonderingsoup.com. Read all of our blogs. We're in the middle of a 3030, mm-hmm. posting something every day. So we have quite a few blogs that we posted. Today was about my barbecue club. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. You gotta go read up on barbecue club and the things that you talk about over meat. And aside, anyway, again, I'm Kat. And I'm Amber. And check out the the page about Malaysia. Y'all join us. Oh, that's Malaysia. right. That's right. We're going on a trip to Malaysia in mm-hmm. September. We still got some slots left. Join us in September of 
2019, so you got plenty of time to get your money right. That's right, don't miss out. Don't miss out. And then 2020, we got a whole bunch of trips. Ooh, it's going to be beautiful. Well, we are out, people. Y'all have a good one. Bye, y'all. Yeah.